So here it is late October, we're getting to Illinois and I kind of want to know what this deer is doing. I need the most recent information I can get on the two target bucks that I have on this farm. One of the bucks is a deer I call the Big Ten and the other one is a deer I call the King Eight. The Big Ten is a really wide deer. He's a wide buck, got big giant brow tines. He's probably definitely in the 70s and he's a cool deer. The eight is a really awesome buck too. He's a mainframe eight. He's actually got a little sticker, makes him a nine. The year before he was just a clean eight. We never hunted him, we left him alone, we passed him. Either one of these deer, I'm gonna be happy to take. I'm gonna go in here, check some of these scrapes, freshen them up, and maybe do some jockeying and move these cameras around a little bit to where some of the cameras that aren't getting as many pictures as others, I wanna see what I can find that maybe can be to my advantage right now. I'll shoot either one of these deer, but I got a feeling that the eight is gonna be the deer that I'm gonna see the most. I think the 10 kind of travels in between my farm and another farm that I have permission to hunt. Whichever deer I can get on the quickest and gives me the best opportunity to kill them, I'm probably gonna go after. Well, it's October 29th. We just got into the stand here in Illinois, hunting over a green food source close to cut beans, timber fingers, timber. These deer don't bed real far away from right here. This is a great travel route when these bucks start pre-rutting. When they start cruising, they'll run from one block of timber to the other. And I've got a lot of pictures last year in this spot. We're just gonna sit here, see what we see tonight. It's first night here since I was here in early October. Just kind of get a feel for what the deer are doing, if anything. Um, saw lots of scrapes on the way in. Saw lots of hunting pressure, which is normal for me. Just gonna have to grind like I always do and just see if we can't pull it off. So the location of this farm, it's in definitely ag country of Illinois. There's some river systems not too far away. It has really solid deer. I've got one particular bean field in mind where I think I'm gonna encounter the big eight. There's a little green food source that we got planted on the outside edge, kind of the interior of this secluded bean field. He can come out of the bedding area. He can walk through the beans, feed through the beans, come to this green food source. He can feed there, then he can go on out to the big main fields for nighttime feeding and checking things out. But it's that time of year where these big bucks are definitely thinking about does. They're working their scrapes, they're gonna be nudging does in these food sources. We definitely gotta keep that in mind on being able to look for those doe groups and where they're gonna be feeding and hunting the wind right so we can get an eyeball on this deer. first evening hunt we're sitting down get everything hung up I put my field foam on I take my in the tree stand shower so to speak as the evening starts to approach we start seeing some does moving into the beans now they're kind of through the trees I can't see real good because it's still foliage on right now and all of a sudden does just start scattering He's really interested in these does, but it doesn't seem like they're giving him the love back. Can't imagine he's gonna be able to lock up with one of these does here. I try grunting at him. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a grunt. See if I can't pull in the timber. I just wanna feel him out, but he's having a hard time hearing me because he's actually at a pretty good distance. I give him a few grunts, I can tell at some point then he finally hears me, so I just back off. We're sitting on some scrapes. I know they're his scrapes. If he doesn't go out to the big destination food sources, he might work his way back around to us. As we sit there a while, all of a sudden, bang. There's the King Eight. He shows right up in front of us again with two other bucks. 
I'm gonna grunt at him now that that doe's running. He might think it's a buck. He starts working those scrapes and I am like jacked now because I'm like, all right, he's in my roundhouse, he's in the plot that we're sitting on, he's working some scrapes at the other end of the plot. This could really happen tonight. First sit of the night, we might be able to get this deer killed. So as we're sitting there and this buck is working these scrapes, I can tell by his body language, he's showing his dominance. So I'm like, you know what? Perfect time for the extinguisher. I'm gonna give him a grunt. I'm gonna try to challenge him a little bit. I give him a few grunts. He instantly hears it, he flicks his tail. He's instantly got it in his mind that he's gonna go a certain direction and he's basically gonna try to circle me and get downwind. He kind of works his way off to the edge of the plot. He ducks into the timber and I'm thinking, man, the next thing we know, he's gonna show up right behind us. But he just never did. And I had probably a 55 yard shot at one point and I'm like, you know what, I'm not gonna do it. I was confident enough that I could get back on this deer. I did not see any point in trying to just rush it. They're calling for rain the next day. I really didn't have a place I wanted to hunt in the morning that I felt like, okay, I could get really close to this deer and not ruin things. But I had a plot in a different area on the farm that I felt I could sit that wouldn't hurt anything. And he's been on that plot and so had the big 10. I thought, you know what, I may hunt that. It's easy to get to, easy access, the wind's perfect. I can sneak into it, it's close to bedding. And my thought was, there's a lot of scrapes there. I'll hunt there in the morning on the edge, catching one of these bucks, working scrapes on their way back to bed for the morning. It's October 30th this morning. It's supposed to rain all morning, all day, all day tomorrow. We decided to hunt something like this that was least intrusive, but yet could see a lot. Might be able to make a call to a big buck on the edge of a field. It's a good travel route from one block of timber to another. So we might be in the chips here, we'll just have to see. There was a big call buck on that side of the farm that I really wanted to take out. Javen, my camera guy, he had a tag. I was in the driver's seat, I was hunting, Javen was filming. A bunch of does come up out of the hollow, into the field, they're crossing the field, coming right to us, going back to this other bedding area. And wouldn't you know it, pops out this big six point call buck. I'm working the extinguisher and I grunted to him while he was pushing these does. I was trying to make him mad. So we do the switcheroo. Javen gets the bow, he stays in his stand. I kept on him, I grunted a few more times dips down in the timber and sure enough he comes right up in steps into our little part of the bean field it's like a little secluded cove and he's just looking i give him another grunt with the extinguisher and it's on Great shot, bud. Great shot, Javen. 
He's going down right there. He's down. Down in the field. <laughs> yes! Holy cow. I wasn't expecting that this morning at all. <laughs> Oh, right there he is. Right there he is. He just made it out of the field. That old warrior. That is a great buck to get off this farm, dude. <laughs> Big old six point right there. And you made a great shot, dude. <laughs> Freaking smoked him. Heck yeah. I'm glad to get that out of there. That was an aggressive buck, grunting hard, pushing does, and so I'm thrilled. We're really excited. We got one kill on the ground already, and I still get to hunt this evening after one of the bucks, and I'm thinking we're going after the King 8 because I think I know what he's doing. Here it is, the evening after we kill Javen's buck. I'm going to do a hang and hunt. I think we need to get a little closer to where we can see these bucks coming into the field looking for does. I wanted to be where I would be able to catch these bucks. If I needed to call to them, I'd be able to take advantage of that situation. Lo and behold, we found a perfect hard maple tree full of leaves, and it was just a little bit off of where I wanted to be, but I thought I could make it work. And I mean, we're literally only 10 feet off the ground, so I wasn't too worried about getting real high. I wanted the cover because I knew I was going to have to call to these deer and I knew I was gonna have to get him close enough to get a shot. So what I'm gonna do, I got the black rack here. I'm just gonna kinda of tickle these antlers a little bit together, like maybe a couple smaller bucks out in this field. Maybe a big buck will think there's some does out here. It's late October, it's cool. We've had a little bit of rain. The deer can really smell good. When it's like this, that wet air and their moist noses just enhances everything for them. So they're twice as hard to beat when it's like this. Take into consideration that it's a wet, cool evening, we've got twice the battle. My system is you know, using the phase system, shower, the lotions to seal your skin up. When I get into the stand, I use that foam on my hair and my hands, and a lot of times I'll, I'll do another layer of lotion just to kind of seal those scent molecules up. It's not long and we got deer moving already. We got some does coming into the field. One of these bucks is gonna show up anytime now. And I no sooner than thought that, and all of a sudden, bam, there's the king eight. He comes up out of the bedding area, and he's just standing there like a king, just looking around. He's trying to figure out what he wants to do. And I knew those does to the south, he could go to them any second, and if he pushed them the wrong way, he'd be gone. I instantly started calling to this deer. I was throwing some grunts at him a little bit, trying to test him to see how aggressive he was going to be and he he kind of reacted he knew i was there but he wasn't coming that buck's just standing there and the wind kind of keeps swirling i've called at him a few times he just don't want to come in <laughs> this went on for probably I bet five minutes that he was in this area, he'd sniff around a little bit. For some reason, he just wasn't running to these does. And I don't know if I, I kept him interested enough that he wasn't sure what he wanted to do. And I started actually doe bleat with the extinguisher, like another doe in this field. Then I started to sound like a buck chasing a doe. I'd actually tickled the black rack together a little bit, trying to make it sound like some bucks getting after each other. And I basically got really aggressive and active with this deer because he just couldn't make up his mind. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna make up his mind for him. He just dropped his guard, 
And once his mind was made up, he was on a string coming right to us. Thank you, Lord. You talk about right here, buddy. Illusion systems. That's what just killed that freaking buck right there. And you see how I tested him out? And then I got aggressive with him. I made it sound like there was two bucks over here. And then I got really roaring with him, and then it ticked him off. And then he's like, I'm coming. That's about as good an eight as you'll ever see in your life. I mean, that you can expect to see in the wild let alone kill, and he's drilled. I mean, he's drilled. <laughs> when you can actually make a deer do something that he's really not sure what he wants to do, and you can take the extinguisher call or the black rack and you can make up their mind for him, and it just has worked really well for me. In this situation, once that all happened and it came together and we made a great shot, it's like a, just a feeling that just comes over you, and it was just epic. It was just a great hunt. He's right here. He's right here. <laughs> He's right there. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, he reminds me of my big nine point years ago. Here's some major keys to think about that were keys to success for this hunt in my mind. The information from this camera is telling us what areas this deer like to spend a lot of time on on the farm. Here's the other thing is the calling techniques. Taking that deer and messing with his mind and making him make a decision that led to us harvesting him. Whoa.